Uh, welcome everybody to Integration TV, the first uh, English uh, TV for Somali people. Uh, my name is Ahmed Nomadik. I was here with you earlier with uh, Hadan speaking to you, and now I'm welcomed by the lovely sister. Please introduce yourself. Uh, well, I'm Zainab Adid. I'm a spoken word artist based here in Toronto. Hello, Zainab. Uh, we are very familiar with one each other, one another. Uh, we are internet friends. We are internet <laughs> friends. We had a lot of conversations about uh, that great tweet that you had. That, oh uh, yes. Made a nice platform on the internet. The historic tweet. Yes. Uh, the tweet is actually talking about how um, you mentioned to Kanan to celebrate. Was it Somali Independence Day? Was it or? So it was years ago. I was probably like 16 years old, yeah. and um, just you know goofing off on the internet, I just made a comment about Kanan not acknowledging um, Somali's Independence Day or Canada Day. It was July 1st, um, which in hindsight, who cares? He could have. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I just tweeted that not thinking that anyone, thinking that it's the internet and no one's paying attention to what a 16 year old girl's doing. And he ended up seeing it and responding to me yeah. and kind of, you know, <laughs> um, just going at me in Somali. Yeah. <laughs> I know your intention wasn't negative. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because that was my first time meeting without meeting you. Yeah. I actually read that tweet and I thought the situation was funny. And I knew your perspective was good. Mm -hmm. What made me really happy is that you actually cared that somebody should celebrate their Somali heritage. Mm -hmm. And something that's really important to us is poetry, right? And so that's another thing that connects me and you is poetry. What does poetry mean to you? Uh, for me, poetry is, is a release. It's such a necessary part of my life. Um, a lot of people journal, a lot of people do stuff like that. And for me, um, the, like, the thrill comes from sharing my poetry. Correct. So I love being on a stage, I love performing. Um, and my writing is always with the intention of sharing. Awesome, awesome. Do you ever write uh, something that's like personal but you don't want to share to anybody? It's like, I need to reflect right now, I don't want to share this at all? I definitely um, keep some stuff to myself, okay. um, but usually it's when something is a work in progress or it's some feelings or emotions I'm trying to work through. Okay, because often I find myself with like spoken, I do a lot of spoken word mm -hmm. poetry, but a lot of times I get challenged by Adam people and you say, oh, you're just a spoken word poet. They derogatory, you're a slam poet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, actually, I, I write before I memorize. And so it is in one form or another written poetry. Do you have something that would be categorized as written poetry or literature, as the academics would call it? I really don't like the hierarchy that mm -hmm. exists within yeah. um, the creative world because I think that um, for such a long time, poetry was this um, really set form of, of people who went to university, studied literature, and everything were the only ones who were able to do. So it became this world that people like us didn't have access to. And um, it's so beautiful to see um, people of color, especially creating their own fields. That's how spoken word happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, I definitely don't like the idea of, of creating some kind of hierarchy to say that something is, is more um, worthy of, of attention, of praise than others. And so for me, it's whatever it is that your craft, you do that. Amen. No, mm -hmm. I, I sincerely agree with you on that front. Uh, as a person who was involved with a lot of, I live in Edmonton, mm -hmm. as you can tell, Edmonton is a lot of Adan people in Edmonton. <laughs> and it's very challenging because as an African artist, they labeled me like I'm, I'm, I'm an, uh, an artist from Africa. Mm -hmm. But wherever I go, they say, well, there's an African poet. And I, I wrote one poem about Africa, which is the I Am Africa poem, but yeah. they somehow labeled me as the African poet. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if I went around saying, hey, you're the bird poet or you're the tree poet? <laughs> it wouldn't make sense, it right? It doesn't happen, because for people like us, they see our ethnicity first. Yeah. And it's it's really a shame that we, we can't tap into those same fields, those same platforms that other people can. Um, because in so many different spheres, not just poetry, white is seen as the norm. Mm. And so it's just it's unfortunate. But we a lot of times we say, uh, white people and stuff like that but uh, a lot of the struggles also come in within our own families and our mm -hmm. own people right uh, i know my parents didn't really want me to do poetry mm -hmm. uh, especially as a profession because they thought it would never work mm -hmm. and we both know that our somalis are very judgmental <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> art we are what you wear what you look like and mm -hmm. what has you been how what is what has acceptance been with uh somali people um it's a little bit of both um i've definitely gotten a lot of really positive feedback a lot of um people reaching out to me because i think that um when i write about myself it's really relatable and so i have a lot of that but then i have the complete other side which is um people really upset um people saying that i'm um talking about 
um, topics that are meant to be kept within the community. Mm. Um, I wrote a poem about shadism, okay. and it was about skin tones and um, you know that kind of um, judgment that comes um, within our communities, and people were really upset by it. And so um, I've definitely gotten a lot of backlash. I've gotten my my fair share of hate mail mm. and um, people in my Facebook, other inbox saying horrible things to me. But it doesn't mean anything when I see those um, really positive Good. responses. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're uh, able to overcome those negative remarks. Because a lot of times those people are either a jealous or they're just distraught that they're not in the position mm -hmm. you are. Get to share what you mm -hmm. very. You know what I mean? It's uh, there's a lot of competition when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm glad that you're over. Uh, you're you're able to persevere over that mentality. So that's really good. Uh, from my understanding, you're involved in Integration Fest. Yes, I am. I'm going to be performing an integration fest that's coming up soon. That's fantastic. Are you excited? I'm actually so excited. I was looking forward to um, to performing, to you know, seeing my Somali people. I love summertime. I love summer festivals. So I'm so excited. Fantastic. I know I love, I write for Somali people, but perform in front of a lot of Adan people. Mm -hmm. Do you write for Somali people or do you just write, period? I think that I write for anybody that shares any part of my identity, mm -hmm. whether that be women, whether that be black women, whether yeah. that be Muslim women, whether that be Somali women. Okay. Um, so I primarily write for people like me, and okay. I think that's really important. It's fantastic. Would you like, would you, I know, do you have something to share for us? I would love I to hear, do. I would love to hear a poem. I'm working on something right now. It's a little bit rough, but um, I would love to share it. Please. Um, I was actually finishing it on my way here. Ooh, fresh. Um, so it's called Suitcase. And so, um, yeah, okay, I'll start. Suitcase, 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 cased in stories of travel and migration and leaving. Left behind salty seas and drowned memories, left behind mothers and fathers and children. Her suitcase, 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 reminded me so much of my home. And a sea so vast it always brought me comfort. Comfort in not knowing its limits, not knowing its limits and where it would take me. Migrations begin, migrations end. Migration, migration, immigration, where would it take me? This journey of moving bodies and suitcases, carrying in them what's left of us, carrying spices, ground spices that taste like a yesterday, a yesterday that never imagined this would be our today. This is where we are today. Changes in location and nation, an exploration because the honey here doesn't taste quite as sweet as the honey back home. And the people here don't taste quite as sweet as the honey back home. Our henna covered hands stand out like blood stains on pavement. Our henna covered hearts long for a yesterday in which we did not stand out. Our tongues remain coated in thick accents. Our bodies remain coated in thick overcoats in shades of other. The red sand beneath our feet now replaced with asphalt, with ash. Ashes of yesterday, I tried to collect everything that was stripped from us, but my arms are far too weak to carry the weight of home. Our attempts at preserving our own doesn't bridge the space between me and what I had once known, so I promised myself that I would be that bridge. Wallahi, I would be that bridge that will one day take us home. Mm, amen. That was fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you so I got, much. I got a personal reading. I know there, I know there are <laughs> people watching right now, but I got a personal reading, and it's fantastic to hear that. Uh, I really love uh, poetry a lot, and to hear it from a fellow sister is fantastic because one thing that's very valuable to me is hearing poetry from my people. I know mm -hmm. I, I said I, I write for Somali people, and it makes me feel really good when I hear poetry from Somali people. I love poetry of all kinds, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? I connect with a lot. And it makes sense to me. Um, so say if the cameras were off right now, right? <laughs> and nobody could see this. What would you say is your dream with poetry? Like what, what, why do you do it? The cameras are off and there's nobody watching. What, what makes you do poetry? <laughs> so um, when I was really young, I, um, I would watch YouTube videos of Deaf Poetry Jam. Because okay. it was a little bit before my time. <laughs> and so I was really obsessed with Amir Suleiman and this one poem called Danger. And it inspired me so much. And so I always tell people, like, my ultimate goal is I want to write my danger poem. I want to write that poem. Okay. See, that's fantastic. <laughs> we know what's one thing that's really cool is a lot of artists say this as well is uh, it's cool that you know that you want to write your danger poem. Mm -hmm. But eventually you're going to write a poem that might not be that danger poem. But yeah. somebody's going to be like, I want to write that poem. Mm -hmm. You never know who you're going to do that for. So please continue your art. 
uh, don't stop writing regardless. I, I know I'm just saying don't stop your writing. <laughs> Inshallah, whatever path uh, art leads to you, but I know for mental health, poetry is very mm -hmm. valuable. And so please continue writing and uh, I hope you enjoy your time at the uh, Integration Fest. Yes, I will. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for being here.